Hey guys, welcome to episode two on anterior uveitis. So go ahead and leave a question or a comment below and we'll get a great discussion going. Now let's do it. So guys, as we know, most of the time this disease presents idiopathically, meaning we don't know why it's happening. Depending on the sources you read, anywhere from 60 to 80% of the time we don't know why. The second leading cause is ankylosing spondylitis, which is one of our HLA B27 spondyloarthropathies. The other ones include ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, reactive arthritis, and psoriatic arthritis. Other causes could be inflammatory such as sarcoidosis, VKH, Bichette's, and others. And infectious causes could be from herpes simplex, herpes zoster, Lyme, tuberculosis, uh, toxocariasis, toxoplasmosis, and the list goes on. And we definitely want to make sure that we dilate our patients just to make sure that we can rule out intermediate and posterior uveitis. Um, if we suspect that the condition is recurrent, bilateral, chronic, or granulomatous, we definitely want to make sure we do some lab work to uh, make sure that there's no other systemic etiology causing it. And our basic labs, as we know, are uh, CBC with diff, ESR, C-reactive protein, and also we can throw in a comprehensive metabolic panel as well. And if we're thinking about the spondyloarthropathies, we need to think about the HLA B27 lab, rheumatoid factor, ANA, and also an x-ray of the sacroiliac joint to rule out ankylosing spondylitis. If we're suspecting tuberculosis, as we know, we can do a PPD or a quantifuron gold blood test. Um, if we're suspecting syphilis, we can do an RPR or a VDRL for active syphilis, or we can do an FTA ABS. I always have to look at those labs because I can never remember <laughs> what they're called. Um, and that detects active or previous syphilis. If we're thinking sarcoid, we can think about doing an ACE, a serum calcium, a urinalysis, a chest x-ray, and or a gallium scan. So now we can start thinking about treatment for this disease. Obviously, if there is a underlying systemic condition, we need to fix that. Otherwise, we can think about Pred Forte every two hours, or even four times a day, or a Durazole four times a day, and then start a taper after that. And then we can think about a cycloplegic to restabilize the blood aqueous barrier and even uh, prevent posterior sneaky formation with either homatropine or cyclopenylate. And then also in office, if there is posterior sneakia, we can use 10% phenol to break that up. And then the follow-up would be possibly one to three days later, depending on the severity of the condition. And then follow-ups would depend after that. So guys, if you have any questions or comments, or if you have special ways of treating this disease, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below, and we'll see you next time.